G'day and welcome to the Midweek Wrap, where we stay connected and think about life from a biblical perspective. How are you today, Ben? I'm doing pretty well. I'm uh, going uh, clean shaven for November. Well, I won't stay clean shaven, but I'm going to grow a mo for November. Looking forward to that moustache. Yes, me too. Um, you're probably not, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but today we're talking about Jiminy Cricket. And uh, conscience. Jiminy Cricket famous said, always let your conscience be your guide. But is Jiminy right? I think not. Mm. Um, but let's think about that in a few moments, because first the notices. Yep, so our, our plans have changed since last week, uh, the midweek wrap last week and Sunday. The school has asked us to stay away until the 21st of November. So that means we're continuing online this week. Uh, it also means that the working day we had planned for this Saturday will now be the 20th. But we are going to do some lawn mowing lawn this mowing, weekend. 11 so o'clock this Saturday. Online yeah. this week. Although we do have some space, some capacity to have some people in the building. Um, so if you're keen to do that, uh, get in touch. We can have up to 20 people in here, which is not that many. But if you'd like to be one of those, get in touch. Online this week, in person on the 21st. That's the key date to remember now. Yes. And a couple, a couple of things. We're looking forward to a couple of people being baptised when we come back. If that's something you've been thinking about, please be in touch. Uh, we'd love to celebrate a baptism before Christmas. That would be wonderful. Yeah, and I'll, I believe the, the Gellets are also still looking for some accommodation um, in December. I think it's the second week, third week of December. Uh, look in there, you use the details of that. Yeah, and they're moving house. They've got a, uh, a week gap between when they've sold their old house and when they need to move. So if you can help, that would be mm. brilliant. So God has made us with a conscience, part of the way he's created us. Um, even people who aren't Christian don't have the law, it, Paul says in Romans 2. Have a conscience. Uh, the problem is they haven't listened to it. So he says, um, people without the law, he's talking about, they show that the work of the law is written on their hearts. Their consciences confirm this, and their competing thoughts either accuse or even excuse them. So if someone's followed their conscience, um, that's a good thing. But the problem is, usually we're accused by our conscience because we haven't. Uh, and this is the problem of sin: is that we don't follow our conscience. But this is the problem that the gospel speaks into. Absolutely. In the ancient world, they talked about being hounded by their conscience or tormented by their conscience and couldn't sleep at night. Um, and the gospel comes along in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22, and talks about us drawing near to God through Christ. And so it says, um, uh, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having a heart sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience. That's the beauty of the gospel right there. Mm. We no longer have to be weighed down by our conscience, do we? Yeah. But yeah. It, it kind of begs this question of what is the conscience? And there's kind of, I think there's confusion around what the conscience is because it kind of overlaps with our emotions. I feel like I'm doing the wrong thing. It overlaps with our convictions because I think this is right or wrong. Where does, what, how do we define the conscience, Rich? Yeah, well, I mean, it, Paul in, in Acts used to talk about him striving to have a good conscience. But what is it? One way to think about it is the difference between the law of the land that gives us, tells us how everyone should live, and the judiciary, which says, hey, you haven't been living up to scratch with the law. In, in us as Christians, the law is like the word of God that tells us how we should live. And our conscience makes us think, am I actually living according to the way God lives? Mm. And so, um, so, so conscience is not the law. The law is like the word of God. But conscience is going, am I keeping it? Mm. Um, and that means that conscience isn't an ultimate authority, is it? Yes. That's right. That's right. And and sometimes we, we make other things inform our conscience. For example, the movies we watch, the social media we watch, our mates at school, our parents you have a huge influence in our conscience. The books we read, um, the latest post I saw on Twitter that can go, mm. oh man, I've got a guilty conscience about this. Mm. So I can be living with a clear conscience, but actually be living in sin because I haven't had my conscience shaped by the Word of God. Or I can be living with a guilty conscience but actually not be guilty before God because I haven't had my conscience shaped by the word of God of what I'm free to do. And yes. you see those dynamics working out in scripture, don't we? So uh, people who, who were raised as a Jew, say, who had always been taught they needed to separate themselves from Gentiles, well, now in the gospel, they actually need to share fellowship with Gentile Christians. Um, just likewise, Gentiles have been raised thinking it was wrong to eat meat sacrificed to idols. Now they can be liberated from that because they know there's only one true God. So we see that in 1 Corinthians 8, don't we? Uh, absolutely. 1 Corinthians 8 says, uh, not everyone possesses this knowledge. So this knowledge about whether idols are real or not. Um, Paul goes on, some people are so accustomed to idols that when they sacrifice food, 
they think of it as though it has been sacrificed to a god. And since their conscience is weak, it's defiled. So people have a defiled conscience because they're not informed about the reality that idols is just a bit of carved wood. Mm. got no actual power. Mm. Um, but they're giving it power because their conscience is... That's what they were raised in. Mm. And, and they need to kind of reinform their heart and mind and thinking according to scripture, not according to how they were raised. Mm. So uh, another way, our conscience can be misinformed... In Timothy, Paul talks about a, a conscience that's been seared. Uh, therefore, you can be following your conscience, but your conscience is actually not sensitive enough. Um, it actually needs to be alerted to the what is the right and wrong thing um, by being shaped by Scripture again. So the, the Word of God needs to shape our, our conscience, both to constrain us and also to, to relieve us, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because if you've been ignoring your conscience for ages, after a while you just you don't notice it anymore. It gets mm. seared. Mm. Uh, as with a hot iron, it says... So how do we keep our conscience informed? That's an important question. Yeah. Um, two ways, really. Well, obviously, scripture is an important way, but also the reality of life uh, needs to inform our conscience. We need to be understand the, the facts of reality. We can't just go off my instincts or my intuitions mm. in, in that sense. Um, yeah. yeah, and obviously, at the moment, there's, there's Christians are disagreeing <laughs> about issues of conscience, or, I mean... And, and various times in history there's been disagreement but obviously the situation with the vaccine and the government policy and how things are being handled how do we inform our conscience uh, in that area rich yeah absolutely the bible tells us we must love our neighbor what does that look like in reality so we have to work out is COVID a real disease is it is there genuine danger and, and the very best health authorities telling us yeah actually it is a serious disease then we have to ask the next question well is the vaccine is it safe yeah, is it effective uh, again, we need to get the very best information, not by off from someone that we sort of heard, saw something on the internet, we don't know who they are, we want to go to the, the accredited Australian health authorities who've got those decisions that they'll be held accountable for. Uh, when they make those decisions, we need to be saying, what are they saying to us? Mm. Uh, and, and respecting their, their wisdom, and, and there's been some brilliant Christian professors that have really helped us think these mm. through as well in recent times mm. so conscience isn't <coughs> ultimate um, the word of God is the ultimate authority so we need to let our conscience be shaped by that and especially shaped by the gospel both how it liberates us from guilt but also how it constrains us to love our neighbor and, and live in, in keeping with God's um, commands um, and one of the ways this is kind of the, the, the beauty of the gospel kind of gets cap captured in um, 1 Corinthians 4 when Paul talks about his conscience before God um, he says, it's of little importance to me that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself, for I'm not conscious of anything against myself, but I'm not justified by this. It's the Lord who justifies me. So, Richard, I'm freed from your opinion of me. I'm yes. freed from my own opinion of me. It's God whose opinion really matters. And in Christ, I've been justified. I have a clear conscience before him. Now he wants me to keep my conscience shaped by the word and keep walking in step with with him to enjoy the freedom of a clear conscience. Yeah, yeah, no, that's absolutely right. Now, there's a pretty famous quote from Luther about conscience, and I think uh, Ben was the one who had this one memorized. Yeah, he, he said something really close to Jiminy Cricket. He said, <laughs> to go against your conscience is neither right nor safe, but he prefaced it with this. He says, my conscience is captive to the word of God. I cannot and I will not recant anything, for to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. God help me. That was when he was being told to recant on pain of death, basically. Yes. Um, the Diet of Worms um, over his reformed um, teaching about the Catholic Church being wrong. But he wanted to stand by his conscience, but a conscience that was captive to the word of God, not to the culture of the day or to his feelings or whatever it was. And that's, that's what we can aspire to also. We are, we are so captive to our feelings uh, in our culture. And uh, feelings ultimately come from conscience, but a conscience or our feelings must be informed by scripture and when luther said it's not safe to go against conscience he's saying it's a conscience informed by scripture uh, mm. that's where you get the the foundation right mm. Mm. yeah i think that's a wrap i think that's a wrap ben thanks for joining us uh, so just a reminder mowing the lawns but not the full working bee uh, this saturday and we're staying online until the 21st and so we'll be doing some prep on the 20th to get ready to uh, be back in person at the, at the uh, what's it called the school so we look forward to seeing you then.